Hi, welcome to Digging for Truth. I'm your host, Henry Smith. For us to say that Western society is destroying itself from within might very well be the understatement of the century. Our public educational institutions have played a significant role in the spiritual, moral, and intellectual demise of Western culture. Public education is now steeped in a worldview that is deeply antagonistic towards the Creator, His moral law, and the gospel of Jesus. Christian parents who are seriously committed to the gospel are deeply concerned about the impact these institutions are having on their children. Is there a better way to educate these precious ones who have been given to us by the Lord God? Well, today, Mr. John Niles of Coventry Christian Schools in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, joins me here in the studio to talk about a gospel-centered and time-tested alternative, classical Christian education. John, welcome to Digging for Truth. Henry, thanks for having me. Hey, it's great to have you here in the studio. Yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, we're, ex we're excited to have you here to talk about classical Christian education. As I said in my, my introduction, yeah. we are facing a crisis in, the, in Western society. But we're going to jump right into the into the the meat because we got a lot to talk about. Yes. So I guess to frame it, we're gonna we're gonna go right right for it right away. What is classical education? Let's start there. Sure. I think uh, if you were to ask that same question to fifty different classical uh, headmasters across the country, you'd get fifty different answers. Yeah. And so um, there's not one answer that I can give to you, but I would describe classical Christian education. Uh, as you mentioned just a moment ago, as a time-tested uh, method of education dating back to the ancients, Aristotle, Plato, uh, some of those individuals were really the founders of the ideas of classical education that started in the Greek and then the Roman empires and then lasted through right up until uh, the beginning of the 19th century. So it's time-tested. Um, and it is a method of education that focuses on where the student is at and tries to meet them where they are, take advantage of natural developmental processes that exist within every young child uh, and teenager. And, uh, and it focuses on critical thinking. It focuses on creating logical thinking, uh, winsome communication, and really has an emphasis on good, producing good citizens. Uh, so th those are some of the highlights and the, the yeah. short answer on what classical uh, education is all about. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic uh, way to start, and you and I are going to develop points of that as we go through our, our, our full program today. You know, it also leads, though, to something, you know, we were talking about before in pre preparing for our show was, you know, we want to define that, which you've done you're, in your way. I guess there's, there's sure. different ways that people can express it, but it, there's the more fundamental question that we have to ask is, what is the purpose of education? I mean, we're talking about classical, right? Here's a method we're going to yeah. describe through the show. But sure. the more fundamental question is purpose. Yeah, Let's absolutely. talk about that a little bit. And, well, I think that that is the question, right? So, right. And I think that, unfortunately, what we've seen in Western society, certainly in American society, is that we have lost touch with, in, in my view, what the purpose of education really is all about. And somewhere in the early 1900s, when we moved to an institutionalized form of education in our country, uh, we, we shifted the focus. And the focus became about preparing young people for a career. Yes. More recently, it has been become, becoming preparing people for young people for a college education, setting them up to get into the best university um, and getting the right SAT score, the right ACT score, uh, getting the right GPA, that has become the purpose of education. And unfortunately, that does a great disservice. It, it makes education utilitarian rather than what the ancients viewed education as. The purpose of education was, and I believe actually still is, about the formation of an individual. Uh, and as Christians, we believe that it's about the formation of a soul, yes. right? Yeah. Helping, helping individuals understand their place in the world, who they are, what is their purpose in life, what's the meaning of life, um, and setting them up to think about things in a critical way, in a logical way, helping them to form a worldview that then sets them up for success 
regardless of the career that they choose, yeah. regardless yeah. of what college they go to. We want our kids to know who they are, know that they are sons and daughters of the Most High, right? As yeah. Christians, that's what we want. So we want to impart uh, virtue into our kids. We want to impart culture in our kids. Uh, we want to give them a worldview, a, a, a way to look at the world, understand it, make sense of it, and then find meaning in their life. And, and when you take that view of education, everything that you do changes, right? The way that you approach every aspect of education changes. And so I think the, what is the purpose really is the fundamental question, and it's what we've lost as a society from my perspective. And what, what those of us that are working in classical Christian education yes. are trying to regain and to restore is that true purpose of education. So I, th I think you, you hit the nail on the head there with that question. That was, that was fantastic. I mean, there's a lot there. There's a lot yeah, there. But you, you yeah. hit on um, something much more broad. I could just share this personal anecdote. Sure. When I went off to college, yeah. the rationale for my decision was, I'll go to engineering school because engineers make a lot of money. Yep. Yeah. Now, there was a lot there in my life that I can't share at this point in time. But I think back on that and I think, boy, what a... What a inadequate way to look at going off to college, it's right? It's fairly shallow. I mean, obviously that matters, right? right what right, career you right. end up in does matter. How much money you will make does impact your life. But whether someone is going to become a carpenter or an engineer or a doctor or a teacher, they can have a good life regardless of the career path. And so what, what we want to focus on in classical Christian education is setting them up to find that good life yeah. Within the gifts, the plans that God has established for that child, that son or daughter. Um, and so it's just a very different way to look at what education is all about. Yeah. Now, you mentioned the development of, of, of virtue. See, this seems to me to be someone you would want to hire for a job when it says, keep your heart with all diligence, diligence, or excuse me. Vigilance, Vigilance, Proverbs 4 to 23, yeah. for from it flow the springs of life. Maybe comment on that for about 30 seconds. Yeah, I think that what's, what's really important um, for those of us that are in education, particularly Christian education, is that we recognize that we're dealing with uh, a, a soul, right? And so if, if we fail to educate someone fully in, in a particular academic discipline, but we have instilled virtue, even though we have fallen short in one area, and by the way, we are not attempting to fall short in yes. any area, but if we do, if we have succeeded in imparting virtue, that person will seek out the truth, will seek out the goodness in life that is there for them. And so for us, virtue is the foundational block that we build everything else upon. And so when you strip away that virtue formation, right, which is what you mentioned in your opening segment, public education, public education has stripped out the virtue building process and when you take that away, you, you've taken away the foundation and everything else, as good as you might do in imparting math or uh, science, it's all built upon a crumbling foundation that is doomed to destruction, right? Because we can be brilliant and still evil. Yeah. yeah and so that's imparting right. virtue is a critical step. It's the foundational step upon which all other areas of education have to be built. That's excellent. Well, friends, we're talking about Christian education, classical Christian. Christian Education with John Niles. We'll be right back. In a culture of intense Bible-denying skepticism, Associates for Biblical Research exists to strengthen followers of Jesus by affirming the authority of the Bible. Our archaeological fieldwork and original research form a strong foundation in upholding the reliability of the Scriptures for students or anyone asking if they can really trust the Bible. Please visit our website and partner with us by joining our prayer team or financially supporting this ministry. And thank you for standing with us. Hi, welcome back to Digging for Truth. I'm your host, Henry Smith. I'm here with Mr. John Niles, and we're talking about classical 
Christian education. We're hoping if Christian parents out there watching that uh, you'll listen to these next two segments because they're really important. And if you're looking for an alternative to educate your child, you've come to the right place. Now, John, uh, you were sharing passionately, and I'm with you. I'm, I'm totally in on this. You know, I just want to tell the audience just to be transparent that we have our daughter in classical education. And when we found out about it, it just lit our hearts on fire. And so, um, but let's, let's shift now. We want to share more about what this is all about. So here's the question. Uh, should, question should education insulate children, immerse children, or inoculate children? And I'll let you explain and build on that. Yeah, that, that is a really great question. It's something that uh, in talking with parents who come to look at our school and consider our school, they're wrestling with that. They might not phrase it that way, but they really are wrestling with that question. So traditionally, uh, many parents have viewed education as either um, insulating my child from the, the bad you know, things that I want to keep them away from, the, the influences of the world, um, or am I going to immerse them in it so that they can figure out how to live in the world, right? So it's right. this in the world or not in the world uh, mindset, and, and parents fall in different aspects there. But what we say in classical Christian education is we don't think that either of those is the right answer. We don't want to. We don't want to keep our kids in a bubble where they don't. They don't experience and learn and hear con contrary ideas to those of our own. We also don't think that it's good to just throw our children into an environment where they're being taught the polar opposite of what we believe. Yeah. Right. In terms of an atheistic, agnostic worldview. Right. This idea that education is neutral is a lie. It's one of the great lies of modern society. Education is never neutral, never neutral. It always takes a position, right? Um, so we believe that the, the proper answer to the question is to inoculate our kids. We want to give them truth. We want to help them understand what God's intent for them is. We want to raise them up with an understanding and knowledge of who God is. But we also want to introduce them to ideas that they're going to have to learn to interact with and wrestle with and argue with in their life. So a good example of that is that we don't just read at our school and in most classical Christian schools, we don't just read authors that are pro-Christian. Right, right, like C.S. Lewis, for example. Like C.S. Lewis. We yeah. do read C.S. Lewis, right. incredible apologists, but we also read individuals like Karl Marx. Our senior class at our school just finished reading Marx and Engels' Communist Manifesto. We read Nietzsche, right? We read his ideas. Um, we study what he thought because Marx and Nietzsche and Freud and, and many others who are very opposed to the Christian worldview, yes. yeah. their ideas are permeated throughout modern society, especially in the universities and the colleges. So we have to prepare our kids for those ideas. And so this idea of inoculating them is we introduce these ideas, we help our students break them down, and then compare them to the biblical worldview so that they have an answer, so that they can, they can engage with and respond to these ideas with the understanding that we find in Scripture. And that it's not the first time they hear about it when they go off to college. No, they've already experienced these right. ideas in our school. They're not, they're not blindsided by Absolutely these alternative not. worldviews. You know, one of the things about this that I thought of, uh, an analogy that just occurred to me was like sort of, you know, you're the parent and you want to control the faucet. That's right. Yeah. And so the classical curriculum helps you to control the faucet. Okay, when's the right time for me to introduce this subject to yeah. my child, this subject to my child, this subject, while all at the same time inculcating the biblical worldview. That's exactly right. It's, and I think uh, a lot of parents, unfortunately, are a little bit naive, right? When you give your son or daughter a cell phone and they have access to the internet, they're going to encounter those ideas at home, right? And they're going to encounter them in, in your home, literally, yes. on their phones, yeah. because they're, they're experiencing all of these things, these, these ideas that truth is relative, right? That there is no one way. That's another thing. When did we stop believing in truth? You know, we, we don't believe in truth as a culture anymore, no, unfortunately. No, no. Well, classical Christian education seeks to help our students understand that truth is objective and truth is real and that the source of truth is God, right? And that 
uh, we have to turn to Him even when it makes us uncomfortable, right? Emotions, our emotions, how we feel about something doesn't change whether it's true or not. And uh, so I think that's a really great point. Yeah, the you know the search for truth that that's a virtue. That's a virtue. Absolutely. It, and and it's an unfor it's unfortunate that it's been lost. It's it's almost been turned around to say it's wrong to search for truth because <laughs> yeah. because if you're searching for that's it, that right. means you, there there are singular answers that might eliminate other ideas, Correct. and that's offensive to people. Yes. Maybe comment on that a little bit because yeah. you know that's a big phenomenon that kids are dealing with. Well, it is, and and what I would say is that th that what you just described that is the predominant worldview that is being permeated, that is being taught in our public educational system today. Is that truth is relative? to your situation, to your feelings, and, and, and your own perspective. And unfortunately, that sets our kids up for a life of misery. Because when you don't have a solid uh, source of truth to turn to, what do you turn to? You're left to your emotions, and our emotions, they shift every day with yeah. the winds, right? And, um, and so I think that, unfortunately, that's a real challenge for our kids today, is, is finding truth. And so that's one of the things that we really focus on, is helping our students understand that it does exist, where to find it, and how to, how to work with it. Well, it seems very much to me that, and has seemed to me, and this is why, you know, I just, again, to be transparent, our family's bought in, because we not only want to inculcate the truth of the gospel, but sure. want to equip so that, the, that, so that our child can be effective in communicating the gospel as she, as she yeah. grows. Well, you gotta hold, we got to hold that All thought, right. John, because we got to go to a break. And friends, please don't go away. Uh, we are having an excellent discussion about classical Christian education, and we'll be right back after this break. Bible in Spade is a non-technical quarterly publication published by the Associates for Biblical Research. Written from a scholarly and conservative viewpoint, Bible in Spade supports the inerrancy of the biblical record and is a must-read for both the serious Bible student and anyone asking if they can really trust the Bible. Archaeological evidence properly interpreted upholding the history of the Bible. Subscribe today at BibleArchaeology.org. Hi, welcome back to Digging for Truth. I'm your co-host, Henry Smith. I'm here with John Niles, and we're talking about classical Christian education, an alternative for Christian parents. Now, uh, John, you were passionately sharing about, about all this, about uh, inoculating our yeah. children with the gospel and, 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 and showing them uh, other worldviews, other ideas, so they're prepared to go out into the world to be good citizens, yeah. good employees, great Christians is what we're striving for, Absolutely. right? So, but let's talk about a little bit of the, of the practical, like what does that look like? And there's a concept called the trivium, which is used. Could you tell the audience about that? Please? Sure. So the tr trivium is a, a, a key part of classic, the classical methodology. And uh, there's a second part to it called the quadrivium, uh, which we probably don't have time to talk about today. But the trivium is this idea of three uh, main stages of education the grammar stage, the logic stage, and the rhetoric stage. In the grammar stage, so that's why we call at our school, we call it the grammar school, which most individuals would think of as elementary school. We yes. call that grammar school. Middle school, we call that the logic school. And then high school, we refer to as the rhetoric school. Um, and the reason that we refer to it those, in, with those terms is this. In grammar, most people think of English grammar. That's not really what we're talking about. What we're talking, although we do focus a lot on English grammar, but what we're really focused on is giving our kids the, the foundational information to build their education upon. And so in the grammar stage, we focus a lot on facts, we focus a lot on uh, truth, and uh, we, we teach history. We didn't get to talk really yet much about yep. the difference between history and social studies, right? Uh, but we teach historical fact right, in the grammar school years. Then in the middle school years, what we call the logic stage, 
we take advantage of that natural curiosity, right? Every parent that has a sixth, seventh grade child knows that they love to argue. They got a right? bajillion they, questions. They too. have a ton of questions and they want to argue every single point, right? And so we take advantage of that in teaching our kids how to structure an argument well, right? If you're going to argue, argue logically. <laughs> and so we teach yes. in those logic years a formal course of study on logic. We actually teach two years of that. Uh, first formal logic and then informal logic. Uh, how to put together an argument, how to identify fallacies in someone else's argument and know how to respond to them. We teach our kids how to do that in a logical way. So that's why we call it the logic years. And then the rhetoric stage of education uh, is the final stage of the trivium. And that's where we help our students develop the ability to speak winsomely, the ability to be convicting, to convince someone else of what they're trying to argue. So you can build a really logical argument and present it pretty poorly. We don't want that. We want so it's our, the art of persuasion. I'm that's sorry to right. interrupt you. That's exactly you, right. So that's part of what you're trying to teach them. Absolutely. Continue, We're trying please. to teach them how to persuade people on their logical arguments that they've built. And so there's a formal course of study in classical education on rhetoric. And typically, most classical Christian schools finish with a senior thesis, which we view as our capstone course. And uh, because we're teaching our kids to really live in the world that we're in, they're going to engage topics in that senior thesis that are very, very difficult. Things, uh, some, of our, some examples for you of some of our recent senior thesis projects that our seniors have done have been on things like the ethics of stem cell research, right? That was a student last year who spent his whole senior year looking at different types of stem cell research and arguing, right, whether it was ethical or not. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and things like that, pornography use. Uh, this year we have multiple students that are engaging on the racial tensions that are going on in our country right now and looking at that. Is there police brutality? Is it targeted against minority groups? Um, it, what is the Black Lives Matter movement? Is it a good movement? Is it a bad movement? They're engaging these topics. They're spending a full year of study looking into it, trying to find the truth and then learn how to persuade others of the truth that they've, they've found. It seems to me, amongst many positive benefits of all this, is that this inculcates a sort of self-confidence, not, not in an in arrogant way, but in a positive way, yeah. of expression of ideas. Yeah. If they're practicing the expression of ideas. That's right. In school, then they're going out, and they can do that in the workplace, at college, whatever it is they, they do, they become a mom. The, right. with other moms that they're talking to who aren't Christians. I mean, the sky's the limit, isn't it? That's exactly right. And, and really, that's ultimately, I think, what most parents, when they think about how and where am I going to educate my child, one of the driving motivators for every one of us, and I'm a parent of five myself, is what kind of life is my son or daughter going to live? Yeah. What kind of person are they going to be? Where are they going to find contentment in life? Are they going to live a joyful life? I avoid the use of the word happy because I think we, we conflate that with joy and I think yeah. those are two very different things. I agree. But every good parent wants to know that their kids are going to grow up and have a full life. And that's the promise of Christ, right? He, came, he said in, it says in John 10 that He came to give us life and life to the full, right? And so what we're trying to do is help our students discover that. Right? Because at the, at the root of it, at the end of the day, education is not about information. It's about soul formation. And regardless of where you choose to send your kids to school, they are going to have their soul formed and impacted and shaped by that educational environment. And so we believe, unabashedly, that the best method of, of teaching our kids, of raising them up, is a classical Christian education uh, where they're going to get that soul formation that's rooted in truth, that's rooted in scripture, rooted in the personhood of Jesus Christ, but that is going to help them engage the world at the same time. Because unfortunately, Henry, as you know, we live in a post-Christian, post-truth society. Yes. And yes. so our kids have to be prepared for that. And we believe that we have the best way to help set them up for success. Well, I, I, I greatly appreciate it. As I've mentioned a couple times, uh, you know, my family and I are in. And here at ABR, we really support these efforts uh, yeah. to educate children. I want to thank you for uh, educate children in this manner. 
Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Well, thank you for Appreciate having me. It was great to be here. It was great to have you. Uh, friends, uh, you've seen a passionate presentation about classical Christian education today. And we want to encourage you, if you're a parent, you're concerned about uh, your child's education in public school, prayerfully consider classical education. We put information up on the screen for you to investigate. If you don't have the means, pray for God to provide. He is the author of life. He's the giver of life. He's the he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. If it's the desire of your heart for something different for your children, uh, we join you in prayer uh, that, that he'll provide for your family to do so. And we pray that you'll consider this today. Thank you for joining us for Digging for Truth and supporting this program. We're grateful for you and we hope you have a great day.